Matthew chapter 2. <coughs> We will come back to this table when we study the gospel according to Luke. Then I will show you the comparison between this genealogy and this one. So for now we go on to Matthew chapter 2. The outline is described there for you, highlighted for you. So, chapter 2 should be very familiar with uh, all of us because uh, we have been celebrating, we've been observing Christmas, and though uh, it is on the 25th of December every year, you know that it is not the exact date of this birth. It's just an occasion to celebrate. I think more likely he was born in the month of September. Here, we will come across the wise man and even Herod. Uh, wise men, they were divinely guided and then they followed the star and then they came. But at the same time, there was one man, his name is Herod, and he was quite insecure. He was so worried that if there is another king in his kingdom, that guy might uh, overtake him. So he wanted to find out who is this new king and wants to put down the king. And this person is Herod. Herod is uh, half Jew, half Edomite, because his ancestor is uh, Esau, Esau, Edomite. Um, not a very tall guy, I think about four and a half feet, according to history, uh, but evil man. Uh, he killed his family, um, and he, he did many... Uh, Crazy things. Even he even ordered that hundred wise men be, be put to death at his death, so that there will be mourning, mourning uh, at his death. Or oh, he's so afraid that when he dies, nobody will cry. Yeah. He was such an evil person. <coughs> but he was also known uh, a build, as a builder, Herod the Great. He if you go to Israel, you see he was the one who rebuilt the temple, the aqueduct out into the Mediterranean Sea and even Masada, and quite a few other structures he, he built. So he's known as a builder. So that is the simple background. So let's look at verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. So if you look at if you look at the map here, you will find that uh, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Bethlehem. This is the Dead Sea, Sea of Galilee, to Bethlehem. Now, this Bethlehem wasn't any place, wasn't just any place that happened to be, that, that uh, Joseph and Mary happened to be. And then they gave birth to Jesus. It was prophesied as by Micah in chapter 5 verse 2. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Bethlehem is a very insignificant town, unimpressive. But you, Bethlehem, Beth means house. Bethlehem means house of what? Bread. Bread. And very apt because Jesus is the bread of life. So, he was born there. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, why Ephrata? Because uh, there are a couple of I think at least another Bethlehem. So just to identify the exact location, Bethlehem, Ephrathah. Though you are little insignificant among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, <coughs> whose going forth are from of old. Whose going forth means 
all that is about him coming, they were told and first mentioned in the past, whose goings forth were are of from old, from everlasting. It's way before. And of course, in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God created the world, right? And Jesus was there because Jesus said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So, He was there at the beginning. So, now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, or Herod, the king, which I mentioned earlier, behold, wise men, these are not the three shepherds, these are not the three shepherds. These are the wise men. And these are not Jews. They are from far away. And they are likely to be those who are into astrology. Uh, they look at the stars and study the stars. But the thing is, they are Gentiles. And they come from far away. Actually, um, Chaldeans, you know Chaldeans, the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, are up north. They come from up there. So scholars say it could be the Assyrians, it could be the Chaldeans, uh, but like me, because at this point in time, Assyrians are really over. The Chaldeans, the Babylonians are, are, are still up there in the north. So like me, they are the Chaldeans. But you need to know is they are not Jews. And the wonderful thing about this is that at Jesus' birth, at Jesus' birth, who were the first people who acknowledged that this is the Messiah? Gentiles, the Chaldeans. And if you read all the way to Matthew 27 and so on, and uh, who, who are the people who acknowledge that this Jesus who is hanging on the cross is indeed the king. The Roman soldiers, you know, they put up there, king of the Jews. And then the Jews came along and said, hey, no, wrong, take down the sign. Then they know how, put up there, it's over, it's done with. You know that one, right? Matthew 27. Yeah, Matthew 27, verse 36. And who... They crucified him, divided his garments, uh, casting lots that it might be fulfilled. That which was spoken by the prophet. Who are these? Are, these are the soldiers. These are the soldiers. And uh, they divided the gar garments. Uh, third, verse 36, sitting down, they kept watch over him. And they put up over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the king of the Jews. The Jews were upset. But the thing is, it's not the Jews who acknowledge him. The Gentiles. Again, we we are part of this plan. The Gentiles. So, behold, wise men from the east, as I mentioned, likely the Chaldeans, came to Jerusalem, saying, "Where is he who has been born King of the Jews?" Hey. You come from overseas, you have no history of, uh, of uh, you never even study my Bible study class, or you don't know from Genesis to, all that. how come you know this is king of the Jews? Again, it's by divine revelation and divine guidance. These are wise men. So, how did they see it? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Now, I believe... I, I mean, we all know that God is a creator. He created the heavens, the earth, and everything that is below. And He created all the stars. And if He wants to send a message using the stars, who are we to say? And He sent a message to the wise men from the east. And they said, we have seen the stars. So we look at Numbers 24. Numbers 24. Verse 7, 17, sorry. And 
Numbers 24 verse 17. You know Balaam? Balaam has been uh, bought over by the, the evil king, the Gentile king. He cursed Israel. Every time he cursed, it became a blessing, right? So, and in verse 17, Balaam said, I see him. It's suddenly, hey, God can use a donkey. God can use Balaam. And suddenly he uttered, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of Tumor. If I were the king who hired this uh, Balaam, I'll slap him in the face. Huh? I pay you and what are you saying? You are saying the good news. He sees him, a future king. Not now, down the road, in future. I behold him, but he's not near, not now. But this star shall come out of Jacob. So the wise men must have known of this, and they are looking, and they saw, hey, this is the star. And this star is out of Jacob, out of Judah, out of Israel. And so they follow the star to go to where God had said, a star shall come out of Jacob. And a scepter, we read just now in Genesis 49 verse 10, that is a symbol of the king shall rise out of Israel and wallah, you know, wallah Moab better the brow of Moab the Gentiles, all those enemies of God and destroy all the sons of Tumor, all the re rebellious, those who rebel against God and this is Jesus so they saw the star and so they come the other one, Isaiah 60 verse 13 Isaiah of oh, verse 3. Sorry. Isaiah, the Gentiles bless Zion. The Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. And in Isaiah 16, Isaiah prophesies that the day will come when the Gentiles will come to your light. And the kings to the brightness of your rising. Anyway, the verse 1 is familiar to us. Arise, shine, for the light has come. And who were the first to acknowledge the light, saw the light, and they came? The wise men, the Gentiles. So, that's why they came and they said, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to, what? Worship him. Not to manipulate him, not like Herod wanting, a, uh, his motive is to destroy this little king. And he came to worship. So when we come seeking him, it is not for anything else but to worship him. Don't come to church for your own purpose, but come to worship him because of who he is. <laughs> When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled because he felt threatened as another king in his kingdom. And all Jerusalem with him. Hey, you read this again. When the king heard this, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. So, all the Jews are, oh, hey, the king is here. Okay, some scholars said uh, they were troubled the Jew, Jews were troubled because the king is troubled. Because when the king is happy, we are saved. <laughs> the king not happy, we all get into trouble. He will punish us. But some scholars said, for the Jews, hey, the king is here. They, if they are not prepared for the king, they are also quite worried. Because he is coming. They know on the day of the Lord, when he comes, he will reward us and so on. But if I have not been a good boy, when he comes, uh, it is. I mean, if today is judgment day, oh no, then you wonder, hey, have I been paying my tithe? Have I been doing my prayers? Have I been reading the Bible? Have I been a good boy? So, in any case, in any case, oh, the king is here. They were also a bit worried, anxious. And when he had gathered, this is important, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes, so the chief priests are those who are 
attending to the temple activities and the spiritual activities. And if they are in charge of the temple, they know they should know the things of God, right? And scribes, who are the scribes? These are the people who, who write the scriptures. These are the people who interpret the scriptures. So they know the word. These people really, they know the word. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, because if he wants some answer, then the best person to go to are the Tachik and not the Bo Tachik one. Mm -hmm. Follow me. Now. All those who are learned who know. He inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. <coughs> so based on your knowledge and your scriptures, so tell me where is this Messiah who was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written, what they can even quote, <laughs> For thus it is written by the prophet, which I read to you earlier, Micah chapter 5 verse 2, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, but out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Oh, eh. I asked the question and he gave me the answer. Eh. If they, these chief priests and these scribes, if they know the answer, you know where they should have been. You know where they should have been. They should have come at Bethlehem waiting for the king. But it's like, you want to answer? I'll give you an answer. Where? There lah, Bethlehem. You want, you go. But shouldn't you be going? You are the Jew. But the Chaldeans are from the north, the Gentiles, they saw the star and they travel all over to come to look for this king. So what is the lesson here, which I shared with them when we were in Bethlehem, when we came out from the basement, uh, the temple, the place where Jesus was supposedly in a manger. Knowledge without action is dead. They got the knowledge right. They know the answer. They know where Jesus is going to be born and so on. But where is the action? Where is the action? They should have gone, instead of the Chaldeans, they should have gone to Bethlehem to await the birth of Jesus Christ. They should have gone. But they had the knowledge and the action. And the book of James, what did he write? Faith without works is dead. So there comes a time where your doctrine must be converted to duty. Your knowledge uh, must be converted into works. Uh. Otherwise, it's just knowledge but no works. So whatever you learn, go and share. Go and share. Go, go and evangelize. Go and teach and then whoever. Even your children or grandchildren, share with them. Do something. Now, years ago, uh, when you look at Bethlehem, it's like, wow, it is really Jews and, and so on. And that is the place where Jesus was born. But today, if you go, you will find that actually it's quite a Muslim populated area. Mm -hmm. hey, no. Then in that case, why didn't Jesus choose to be born somewhere else where there will be Jews and then the Jews will remain? And be... But today, it is almost Muslim occupied. But that is the thing. The first shall be the last. First given to you, the Jesus was born there. You should have kept capitalized on that and, 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 and take that as a birthplace and then you know build your, your your faith and whatever unto God. But they neglected. And they, they left the place. And today is occupied by Muslim. I mean, if he were born in Singapore, we would have, you know, all become holy holy. <laughs> so you may be the first recipient, but your knowledge without works are, is dead. And God will bring it. I mean, the gospel, the Bible, the word of God was given to the Jews. But they didn't take it to the world. So God used the church. And the church is now bringing the gospel around the world and back to Jerusalem. So, there we are. So now we go on to verse 7. Then Herod when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. So they can study the star, what time the, the star show up. 
and determine from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Why he sounds so pious. But I'm sure you know that he has a different agenda. You know, now it is not a short distance because for them, for them to travel from up north and then come down to Jerusalem and then met Herod and then go and look for this Bethlehem. Those days they don't have modern means of transport. So they go by on foot and on camel and so on. So it's going to take time. So go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Now you notice now, the word in verse 8 is young child. Young child is not a baby in a manger anymore. So sometimes the way they do the Christmas play, uh, they say perpetually a little baby in a manger. When the wise men came, it is no longer in a manger. We will read shortly. Verse 9. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them. So again, they had divine guidance. So they departed from the king, the star guided them again. So they had seen in the east, went before them, till they came and stood over where the young child was. Okay? So the, the star brought them to the young child. Supernatural guidance. Verse 10. When they saw the star, not Jesus, huh? when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the underlying house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they saw the young child, when they had come into the house, they saw the young child. By now, it is almost one, according to uh, those uh, historians who calculated the, the journey they took and so on, to find this child, it is about one and a half to two years. So the little boy is no longer a baby in a manger. It's about one and a half years old to two. And they are no longer in a manger because there was no room in the inn that night. But they are now in a house. So in just a few verses, uh, you find that one and a half to two years have passed by in the life of our Lord Jesus. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly great joy. It's like, what? Wow, treasure hunt found, you know. But they did not know Jesus. That's why they are, they are focused. Because they are astrologers, they only follow the star. Hey, found treasure. Okay lah. But for us, is when we see Jesus. But for them, is when they saw the star. So, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him. Gold, frankincense, frankincense and myrrh. They did not come to the Lord empty-handed. Neither should we. If you come to worship him, you should not come empty-handed. And they came prepared. Though they did not know him, they do not know much of him, about him, but they came because this is the king. And they presented to him gifts. And the first one is gold. Gold speaks of royalty. Gold speaks of deity. So in this case, in this case, he is the king, royalty. So he's it points to us the mighty king. This is the mighty king. So, brought gold to him. And then frankincense. What is frankincense? Frankincense is that which they use for worshipping, burnt incense, the smell, the aroma. And that you will only do when you are worshipping. You are the priest. So this speaks of divinity. So gold speaks of royalty. This one speaks of divinity. 
to a divine person, you are offering this incense, frankincense. And the first one, gold, points to the mighty king. The second one points to the ministering priest. Points to Jesus as the ministering priest. And he is. He's the king. And he's the priest, the great high priest. And then the next one is myrrh. Myrrh. What is myrrh? Myrrh is something that they use for burial. It is bitter. Preparation for burial and so on. And Jesus, Jesus is going to be the martyr prophet. It points to him being martyred because he's going to be bitter. He's not going to like end uh, riding into the sunset victoriously. He ended his life on earth by being crucified on the cross. So it was. It points to burial. It is bitter. So this myrrh, which the wise men brought, I'm sure they did not know the full significance, but they were just directed. Go pointing to him as the mighty king. Frankincense pointed to him as the ministering prophet, and myrrh pointed to him as the martyred prophet. And there is only one person in the Bible who is the king, the priest, and the prophet. And that is none other than Jesus. So their, their gifts, their gifts to Jesus was very, very prophetic. So again, it is a fulfillment of uh, Isaiah's prophecy. In Isaiah 60, which we read just now in the first couple of verses, now you look at verse 6. Isaiah 60 verse 6 The multitude of camels shall cover your land The dominary is some, uh, another uh, group of camels Category Or Median and, and Ephah All those from Sheba shall come They shall bring gold and incense They shall proclaim the praises of the Lord So these people came as prophesies Verse 12 Am I going too fast? These gifts are, by the way, they are not cheap. They are costly. Ah, before we, we go, I must point to you this. And they fell down and worshipped. These are Gentiles, huh? the, the, the Chaldeans. And they fell down and worshipped, underline him. Right next to it, not Mary. You follow me? I'm pointing you to this. is because some... You might have got friends who are still uh, ignorant of all this. And if you want to reach out to them, point. The, the focus is not on Mary. It is on Jesus. Worship Him. Not the mother. Verse 12. Then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Wow, how come this wise man gets so much favor from God? Guided there and guided from there. But it is all in God's design that Jesus shall be protected. Now, I mentioned that uh, Genesis chapter, no, Matthew chapter 1 is likened to be like Genesis. Chapter 2 is likened to be Exodus. Okay, So we will see the rest of this chapter the significance or the, 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 sin, the, the, the comparison with the book of Exodus. Escape to Egypt, verse 13. Now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord. When who had departed? The wise man. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. And God will always, more often than not, uh, uh, reveal his plans and his will in dreams and visions. So in this case, to Joseph again, angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph, this is the third time to him, in a dream saying, Arise, take the young child, not baby, eh, and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod who seek the young child to destroy him. 
when he arose, he obeyed. That is again very commendable. When he arose, he took a young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. By night, why not wait until dawn? Because it is immediate. So when you receive a word from God, please act on it immediately. Don't procrastinate. And departed for Egypt, which is a picture of the world. But sometimes it is in God's design you go there for refuge. But I will tell you later why he went into Egypt and then why he came out. And was there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord. Again, the fulfillment formula. It might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Out of Egypt I call my son. What we will be reading shortly is after Herod died, then Joseph and the family, I mean, they were, they were given uh, instruction now, now go back. And Jesus was brought there into Egypt, which is a picture of the world, and then now he be taken out. And out of Egypt, I call my son. Egypt is a picture of the world. And the fact that Jesus went into Egypt is a picture of him coming out of heaven into the world for us. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men can become sons of God. And next when we read, when Egypt, when Joseph and Mary and Jesus, the little Jesus, taken out of Egypt, it is a picture pointing to Jesus coming into the world and he will take and save us, deliver us from the world. You follow me now? If he had not gone into Egypt, then he's, then he's like, hey, he said he come and save us, deliver us from the world. But he did not go to Egypt. But to go into Egypt is symbolic because Egypt is a picture of the world. So he came into the world and to save us from the world. So let's read. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise man, was exceedingly hung angry, angry. <laughs> and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all its districts from two years old and under you know why right because he estimated the distance to locate the time taken to locate this child for the wise man about one and a half years old so to be a bit more uh, give some buffer, so he said two years old and below slaughter them. According to the time which he had determined from the wise man, this was fulfilled. What was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying, a voice was heard in Rama. Rama is uh, about five miles north of Jerusalem. Uh, lamentation, uh, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Rachel, who is Rachel? Rachel is the mother of Israel. Mother of Jacob. Israel. Yeah. So, it is, this verse here is to, to tell us that the places around Jerusalem will be weeping. Why? Because all the little ones will be slaughtered, will be slaughtered because they are no more. Now when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. So this is the fourth appearance to Joseph. We all one time really uh, not, uh, we haven't even got one, I mean, I, I had, uh, but some of you don't even have one time. This is like four times uh, angel to Joseph in a Okay, in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise. And what I like about Joseph is he hears the voice of God and he acts on it. He, ne he did not go ahead nor did he, did he delay, but he acted on it. Arise, take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. Herod's plan to disrupt God's plan was not realized. 
Then he arose, took the young child and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. Israel. Took the young child and came into the land of Israel. So, the parents brought the child into the world, into Egypt, and now take him out. And when Jesus take, was taken out of Egypt, that is a picture pointing to him who, who will eventually take us out of this world from the presence of sin. So he must, so he said, why go to Egypt? He must go to Egypt. It's symbolic so that he will take us out eventually. Salvation for all is painted in that obedience. But when he heard that Archilaus, correct? Quite old person, Archilaus. When he heard Archilaus was reigning uh, over Judea instead of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there because this son of Herod was just as evil, if not more evil, than the father Herod. And he was ruling over Judea. So that means. Uh, that means it is not saying, you see, this is the way they went to Egypt. So logically, if they go back the same way, they end up here, Bethlehem. Yeah? But knowing that the evil son is here, so they went by the way of the sea and went up because they also want to siam. Avoid, avoid this evil king. He was afraid to go there and being warned by God in a dream, he turned aside into the region of Galilee. Now, he would, I mean, turn aside, he could even turn this side to the left or turn this side to the right. Logically, he should turn the other side. But he turned this way, it's a long way up. So he turned this way because he wanted to go to Galilee up here. So that he would, he did to avoid the king, no, this Archelaus. Verse 23. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Now, scholars do not know um, where this Matthew get this. Uh, put this down, when he said, it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Nowhere, nowhere is it mentioned that he shall be called a Nazarene. It could be some other scriptures that is not recorded in the Bible. We don't know. It's, as far as we know, it is not in the Old Testament. The closest, the closest I can find is in Judges is in Judges 13 verse 5. And in Judges 13 verse 5, uh, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. But this was talking about Samson. So, Nazarite and Nazarene, they are two different things. So, I, I read one Bible and then they point the reference uh, to uh, this. So, you, wow, okay, maybe that is the verse for this. Uh, I just want to say, since we are Bible students, uh, in case you read a Bible and then it points to you this reference, Judges 13 verse 5. You say, oh, okay, but that verse is for Samson, not for Jesus. So, I do not know where did Matthew quote this from, but we all know that he grew up in Nazareth. And that is the good news. Okay. So, here in chapter 1, we studied the heritage of the king. In chapter 2, we have just studied the uh, homage to the king or the nativity of the king, his birth. Then his exodus. And that uh, we will stop 
until we meet again in February. So Father, we thank you so much for including us Gentiles in your grand plan of redemption. Indeed, our inclusion in your book of life is purely by your grace. So I pray, Lord, that we too have learned much even in the life of Joseph, that there are things we do not understand, we do not comprehend, but like him, we ought to obey and to respond according to your will. So help us, Father, help us even so to treasure that which you have placed in us, that we too can also share this and shine the light brightly for Him and others, that they might come to know Jesus Christ. So we commit ourselves to you. We ask, dear Lord, bless us as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.